Welcome to the Gen Men Camp Director webinar number two. We're going to tonight be talking about recruiting staff and campers. And tonight our host is Jeff Brodnex. He's having trouble with his microphone, so we're improvising. So hopefully you can understand everything he's saying. He's speaking through a speakerphone on a cell phone. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jeff. So let, let's do this. I'm, I'm going to move through the uh, here, here's our agenda for tonight, and our our goal is going to be we're going to spend some time praying, uh, just spend a minute praying, and then I'd like to set the stage with a devotional uh, from John John Ford. Let me just hit some of the basic recruiting, starting with why. What it is that why why do why are we recruiting? Then looking at some recruiting basics, some recruiting landmines. Then the goal is going to be for you guys, as you as you will, to share best practices based on what you've experienced and what you've tried. And then uh, we'll end the last five minutes or so with some challenges, some commitments, and some action steps. We'll close with prayer, and we'll call it an evening. Thank you for your time. And uh, so let, let me begin with with prayer. Um, but our, our goal tonight is to, is to talk about recruiting and how we spread the word and how we magnetize um, what we're doing, what the Lord is doing with us through our camps and through our mission. We want it to be so attractive that people want to come, and, uh, and we, want to, we want to magnetize that. So let me – I'm not sure if I, if I hit twice and I, and I skipped a, a slide. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one and see how this plays out. All right. The other day at our, at our meetings when we were in San Diego, the, our, the Gen Men team um, and the CAD team, Michelle Fleming led us in, a, um, in an exercise where we were talking to talking about praying, but praying with open palms and, and praying with, with a heart that allows us to receive, that is expecting to receive, that is, that is seeking the Lord to speak to us, speak with us, and help us really feel who it is and what he's doing with us. So would you all just join me in this and just open your palms to the Lord and join me in prayer? Lord in heaven, as we come, you've seen all the work that's gone into tonight, and you know that the folks who are giving up their time, uh, it's things like this that can create just a little bit of frustration for us because we really want things to go well and, uh, we want it to be smooth and easy, but technology, while it's supposed to help us, it very often gets in the way. But we are, we're expecting, we're expecting that you will bless us with thoughts, that you will bless us to be able to transcend this media. Much like it was that you transcended humanity, and you, you, you bless all of humanity with things they can't even happen how you did it. And so we just pray that tonight, in this session, in this webinar, that what we'll be able to do is be able to hear from you, to be able to speak freely from our hearts, to be able to experience a connection and a bond, to be able to thank you for what you're doing, and to be able to receive. We ask expecting, Lord, because we know that this is your webinar. This is your moment where you're connecting GCI camps and missions. And so we simply ask for your wisdom, for your blessing, and for your help, may we receive it, Father, from the Spirit in ways that we can't even imagine. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'd love for you, if you, if you had your Bible, you probably know the story, but I wanted to take a minute to recount the story of an epic recruitment moment, an epic story of recruitment. It's found in John 4, and, and it's the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. And she was she'd gone to the well and um, this is the story where Jesus was there the disciples had gone off to get food for Jesus and he starts talking to the woman and he, he looks at the Samaritan woman in verse 7 of chapter 4 of John and it says Jesus said to her can you please give me a drink of water he was alone at the time because the disciples had gone to the village the woman was surprised because the Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans and she, she challenged him and said you're a Jew well, to make a long story short, Jesus speaks to her, and he, and, he, and he knows her story. He tells her her story. He speaks into her life, and he talks about living water. He talks about something that would be transformative for her. 
And after he challenged her to go get her husband, and he realized that you know she had five husbands, five husbands and a boyfriend, it was like her heart her heart was pierced. And she says in verse nineteen, "Sir, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is a Jew? Why did the Jews use the system of Jerusalem being the only place of worship?" He says, "The time is coming, and and will no it no longer matter where you worship." And he he pierces her heart with a message. And she goes away and she goes back to Samaria and she tells all these people about Jesus. And it was so passionate that she goes back and tells her story and all the people in the village want to come back with her. They came streaming from the village to see him. Verse 31 says, the disciples had come back and they saw all these people coming and they said, Master, come on and eat. He says, I've got food that you don't, you don't know anything about. And then she said, well, who brought it to him? He says, my need is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. He said, do you think that the work of harvesting will not begin until the summer begins or four months from now? I want you to look. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvest is paying good wages. The fruit of the, of the harvest is people being brought to eternal. What was happening at that very moment was that the people were coming back from Samaria with the Samaritan woman. And, and it was a... It was, it was an amazing moment because he said the fields are ripe for harvest. And they were looking up and they saw people coming. He told them they were going to reap what they had not sown for. And I think when it comes to recruiting, that's part of what it is that we are going to be doing. God's going to be blessing us in so many ways to reap fruit that we haven't even sown. There are people who are needing what, we, what he's given us to offer. And we want to offer that. But I think the biggest point that we need to start with is recognizing and starting with why. Why do we do camp? Why does Great Lakes camp? Why does it do it? Why is the rock doing camp? What's happening and what, what, why is, um, uh, crosswalk. Why are you doing camp? What is your why? If you got a piece of paper, write down that question. What is our why? Because as we begin the concept of recruiting, the why will feed the who. Our who is Jesus, but the people that we go after, the people we look for, will be drawn to our why. And that's the beauty of what Jesus is doing in our world. He's challenging us to look at our why. I, I read a great quote not long ago, and uh, it, it is by uh, Simon Sinek. He's, a, he's an author. He wrote the book, Start With Why. He says, any organization can explain what it does. Some can explain how they do it. But very few people can clearly articulate why they do it. And that's the challenge of us. We know what we do as camps. We even know how we do it, and we can explain that. But how clearly can we and all of our staff members and all of our kids, how clearly can our why? That's what I like to spend a couple minutes just in your own mind, just letting that mull around for a second. How clearly can you, your, your team, your leadership, your campus, how clearly can they articulate the why? It might be a great question to ask them, to ask folks when you have your next team meeting, just before you even get started. Why do we do camp? And see what the answers look like. But that's what we're going to begin tonight. We're just going to just ask that question because once we know what the ultimate end game is or our why, what we're seeking, the end game will be always be on people's minds. And therefore, when we seek to recruit, what we'll be doing is we're recruiting with the end in mind, with the ultimate goal in mind. And maybe in, in your um, in your conversation later, maybe we can we can talk about that. We can just just throw a few comments out there. Our why? For many of you, it might even be simply in your motto. I know at, at, at New Heights, when I was writing New Heights, our motto was reaching new heights in Christ and in life. That was our why. 
our why was to help our staff and to help our young people, help anybody who comes reach a new height. If they were, if they were, at, they had a relationship with Jesus, if they understood how the Spirit was working in their lives, we wanted them to reach a new height in that relationship. If if they were coming there and there were some challenges or some things that they would they would learn to do, learn a new skill, um, figure out a, a new way to do ministry or build new relationships. They would reach a new height in those areas. But our why was reaching a new height in Christ and in life, in our identity. So today we're going to talk about recruiting. And recruit, the word recruit actually comes from, a, from the word that means new growth. Or it also means to strengthen or reinforce. But, it, but it, in the imagery, which most, the etymology of most words come from, the imagery that is created presents a military image. It presents an image that embodies the need to enlist new soldiers or new warriors. And and for us, we know that the weapons of our warfare are not of the world, and we're not fighting against principalities in power, against the, the people of the world. We're fighting against principalities. We're doing kingdom work. The captain of our host is, the kingdom is advancing, and the gates of hell won't stop. And so we're trying to enlist new soldiers and new warriors in this great, this great war that's going on, to advance the kingdom. And so our camps, in our particular case, are a part of helping Grace Community International do that, our local congregation. But recognizing that even some of our folks don't attend GCI churches, but even if they don't, they go back to their local church with the mindset of advancing the kingdom. And that's the beauty. It doesn't matter the denomination, it's kingdom work, even though we are Grace Communion International. And we want to leave this to help bless great communion and national churches. But it wouldn't matter if people went to our churches or not. We want them to go back home, engaged in ministry, engaged in the battle to advance the kingdom, to advance the identity and the freedom and the grace that comes from the Father through the Son by the Spirit that transforms lives. And then we are willing to lay it down for that. So the word recruit has that imagery, not just get more people. Yeah. So what I'm supposed to, to, to consider now is some, some recruiting basics, if we can, if we can look at that. Um, as we do the, the basics of recruiting, what I'd love for us to consider are the following things. To repeat, whenever we're recruiting anything, we get the longer to think about our why, and we're thinking about the, the engagement in the kingdom work. We need to focus on doing it prayerfully. If we're going to recruit people, let's recruit people, people prayerfully. By simply doing something, and I don't know if you've done this before, you probably have, but asking all of your staff members, all of the people who are involved in churches, to ask the Father, Son, and the Spirit to lead us to those who need to be with us, who need what we have to offer, who need what we're offering. Let's ask God very specifically to lead us to people and to lead the people who are looking for what we offer through him or he's offering through us to us. And so I would just bathe your recruiting process in, in prayer. That's a recruiting basis. In other words, being intentional about our recruiting. Do we know the kind of people that we really want to attract? Who do we, I mean, because it's one thing to just have warm bodies. But who do we really want to attract? Who are we intentionally seeking? Who is God sending us to? I, I, I kind of put intentionally that, that there's all of our camps kind of look at three different types of people. We got people who need our camp, people who will come and get excited about it and cheer it on, and then people who will come out of it and be leaders. And my goal is for all of them to be leaders, but our, our, we, we want people who need us, people who can keep it moving and keep it growing and people who will go out and lead from the camp and back into the local intentional that when we're recruiting people we have this in mind if they are a leader we want them to move to this becoming a cheerleader or becoming a leader itself that's our goal all the time without exception and without um, um, without apology and then the next, the next piece is to recruit missionally. Our, our motto in Gen Men is loving kids, building leaders, sending a generation. 
and so that's where you get those those leaders, cheerleaders, and build, and leaders. Is that we want to love on the people who come. Absolutely, want to love on them. We want to build them, though. We don't just want to love on them. We don't just want to gather them. We want to love on them, and then we want to send them out. We do that in Kibbutz. We're coming in to love on each other, to build each other, and be equipped, and then send each other out and be sent out. And so. When people are on mission, if we're thinking always on mission, our why? If we think about the key staff, we'll recruit key people. We know the areas that we need help. Every camp knows the area that you need help in. And so our, our mission is going to be to recruit key staff, but then also to recruit general staff, people who can do anything. And this sometimes is where you have those people who don't maybe have a, 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 a solid GCI church affiliation or a church affiliation, but they can come help. They can come serve. And they will be moved and loved on and helped through the event. And so we do have GCI and not GCI staff. We want to, I, I think we can recruit all of those types of people. And then mission, missionally recruiting GCI and non-GCI children and youth. Because we're, we're recruiting staff in campus. And so our, 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 the power of what we're doing is, is seeking to recruit kids recruit staff, but it being intentional about that not just seeking kids who are looking to get away for the week or get away for the weekend. I mean, that might be nice to, to help people, but ultimately what our goal is, is to be able to continue building the kingdom and continue to building the kingdom with GCI and non-GCI youth. Those are some of the recruiting basics that we have. Let's look at a couple of recruiting landmines. Uh, but for potential landmines that, that I think we've all faced over time. One of them is the warm body syndrome. Very often we get um, our, our staff, we're, we're fighting for staff. We need counselors and we need key staff. And so camp is three weeks away and we still need more people. And so we can start filling it with warm bodies so that we can have the numbers. And sometimes we have a minimum number that we that we have to use when we're um, uh, at the facility, so we need numbers. And so we end up filling, filling spaces or filling beds. That's a potential end, because then what we end up having is, we end up having people, but our mission gets diluted a bit. And our, 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 we don't get, we get bloated a tad bit. So we need to continue, consider that. There, there's a place for, for folks who need to connect, but as a general rule, our, our desire is to missionally recruit. And, and sometimes we, we fall into the bring a friend only strategy. So the only people who are coming are, we rely on our staff members and the campers to bring a friend or to bring somebody along with them. That's our, our primary or sometimes our only means of recruitment. And what will happen is over time, that will in itself, uh, it'll, there'll be the point of diminishing returns or we'll, we'll actually lose our the, the ability to recruit more people. Sometimes other people are recruiting, but we as the directors aren't actively recruiting people. Every chance we get, every time we go visit a church, or maybe we not go, maybe go visit churches, we're not actively engaged ourselves. And so I would love to ask you, how engaged are you in the recruiting process? Because director involvement will set a tone and set a model for others. And, and actually, it's, it's one of the greatest blessings. You're probably one of the greatest recruiters ever. Because when you go out after staff, and when you go out and you invite people, sometimes they just need you to do it. That's a powerful piece. And if we're not there, I think there's a large chunk of folks who get missed. Now, I think about in uh, New Heights, one of our interns is Jackie Winston. And I remember the year he came uh, I, I had gone to visit his church area, and I saw him there, and you know, he's a young man, he's an exciting young man, he was a college graduate, he was uh, passionate about things, and I walked up to him and I said, Jack, I need you at camp. Our young people need you at camp. Why aren't you there? And he, he came that year, and he's been back ever since. He's a bishop in New Heights. And he's one of our interns, but he's an amazing gift, an amazing gift to the whole gender family. 
I think sometimes one of our other challenges is we put it to landmine is that we do a bait and switch, or what appears to be a bait and switch. People go to our website or um, see our brochure, and what we sell them is not what we really are. I don't think that happens very often. That happens a lot more sometimes. Than I think our camps really do a good job of being being honest about what we have to offer. But I, I really think we, we just need to be careful of that to make sure you sell what you are and to, and, and to be open, honest, and clear job you can, promotion. And you know, Joe, can, Joe Brandon can speak to that very well. They do a great job there. Um, but, you know, but just make sure we don't wait and switch. And also, um, the last potential landmine is that we stay in house or we stay inside GCI, GCI network for groups, for staff members, or for, um, for. And I think sometimes I think we're, we're all learning that it might it, it would be good to, to reach outside of of the GCI network. Maybe it's to local Christian colleges, or maybe to high school who are part of a Christian club um, to, to be a part of, of that. So I, I think that, that would be really good. Uh, those are some of the potential landmarks there. And then just ask, if you, are there any questions that anybody has so far? Well, nobody's raising their flag yet. Um, okay. So I guess we can That's move on. We will, just so everybody knows, at the end, we're going to unmute and allow people to share some of your best practices, some things that have worked for you. And um, I've got a chart that we're going to put up that kind of categorizes different ways to advertise and market. So we really want your input. And I'm so glad there's so many people on tonight because we want your, your input on this call. Absolutely. And, and, and this is the time to do that. So what, what I'd love to do now is... Turn it over to you for a little while, and maybe just raise your flag. That way we don't have everybody speak at one time. But if you'd like to share just one, let, let's start with one, and then we can, we can work our way around. What are, what are, what's, maybe one or two. Just go with one or two. We've got about 25 minutes that we'd like to take for this. What are, what are some of your best practices? How do you hit your target uh, as far as the recruiting? And you, and you can either go with staff, or you can go with campers. I'll start with me. One of what I was directing, one of the things that I would do, I personally would actually go out. I think I told you what I just did with Josh. But I would go places, and every time I saw someone that I, that I believe would fit with what we're doing and, and um, connect with what we were doing and be a part of it, or they had a, a young person who I think would benefit from camp and you know, didn't just need a, um, you know, a, a behavior modification week or you know, give mom a break to get away. Um, I would invite them. I would say, listen, why don't you come? We could really use you. And it would be a blessing for you. And I, and I, I just saw who we were and, and what Jesus was doing in our world. And, and I tell you what, it, it worked very well. Um, I needed to recruit outside. I actually reached back out to folks who I had known from SEP or SEP Big Sandy, people that I worked with years ago, maybe even some of the folks who weren't even a part of our denomination anymore. I just reached back out to them. And say, listen, we're doing camp. Are you you in the area? Would you be willing to help? So what are some of the things that you did? I'll, I'll open the floor to you all now. So I'm not sure if you are allowed to unmute yourself. If you can, you can just click on your microphone and, and get rid of that red slash. If for some reason you can't, just raise your flag and I will unmute you. If you have, if you want to share what you're doing well. For some of you, you fill up really fast with, with especially campers, so maybe... Okay, it looks like Susan unmuted herself. Do you have something to say, Susan? I'm just wanting to just listen because our camp is so small, so I probably won't won't comment. I'm not sure exactly how to turn my flag on. Okay, so I'll mute I'll mute you again then. So thank you. Does any, Does anybody have um, a best practice they want to share? We've got um, I think you all can see Toby Johnson, Mike Ermey, Joe Brandon, Dennis Elliott. Somebody calling in from a 404 area code. I'm not sure who that is. That's probably Poncho. Oh, Poncho. <laughs> um, and then David Howell. So nobody wants to share? Oh, 
come on, don't be chicken. Well, I um, oh, I should switch over. I've got. I did take some various things that people had sent me, and I put them into a chart. I guess we could go forward to the chart if that's where okay. we're, if that's where we're at. Are we? Is that where we're at? Oh, Jan, Joe Brandon just unmuted. Do you want to say something, Joe? Uh, yeah. Um, one of the one of the biggest things that uh, we have seen with uh, our recruiting uh, here in recent years was to with what Jeff was talking about at the very beginning of, of the why. Um, we had a why for several years, but it kind of started getting lost in translation because when you do camp for so long, we've been doing crosswalk for 15 years. So when you do it for so long, you get a lot of the same staff and a lot of times you get uh, the, the same campers coming over and over and over to where it becomes kind of a well-oiled machine and it, and it just kind of goes on its own. Well, <clears throat> We started getting to a point to where uh, we were noticing our numbers declining uh, steadily over many years, and we all started asking the question, why is it going down? And and we came to the realization of, we need to figure out why we do camp again, and then how can we be clear on our communication consistently every single camp of why we do camp? You know, Crosswalk is uh, more unique in the sense of, we do it twice a year and it's only a weekend camp. And so even with doing it twice a year, we still have to reiterate uh, through through uh, the local congregation like Oklahoma City, who is the sponsoring church. Uh, we got to do it there consistently. But then when we get to camp, we also take time out at camp with all the staff and we reiterate why we do camp. And um and so that that's what's helped us because it, it created this excitement again of, yeah, this is why we do camp, you know? And, and so when, when we would go back after camp and we would talk about it in our local congregations and everything, all of a sudden this excitement started happening. People were like, man, I want to be a part of this. This is, this is fantastic. God's doing some amazing stuff here. And now we're, we're sitting at this, this next camp in a month. And it's at least our third largest camp since we've started Crosswalk. And, um, and we, we honestly believe it's because we were, God has blessed us with it, of course, but also being clear of why we're doing this. That's fabulous. Excellent. Yeah, Great. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you just emphasized Jeff's point, which is excellent. I'm glad. Um, anybody else want to share? Yeah. Toby, hey, you're this unmuted. Is Toby. Do you want to say something? Hey, Toby. Sure, I'll give it a shot. Um, one thing that we, I mean, we have done in our camp out here is with the great lack of GCI congregations, you know, anywhere in the two or three state, four state area from where we are, we we initially, when we started, uh, didn't feel like we had any option other than to go out to other people outside of GCI. So it was not intentional to exclude GCI. It was just nature of the situation we found ourselves. But one thing that uh, we did, especially in relation to staff workers, is uh, intentionally go out to uh, churches in the local community, which we knew were not part of larger denominations that already had youth camps. Uh, specifically some of the smaller churches or or just finding out some of the churches that didn't already do youth camps. And uh, so I went out uh, and still do periodically to a various different churches uh, and sat down with, you know, would buy a cup of coffee or lunch for, you know, one of the key leaders in the church, sometimes the pastor, sometimes the youth pastor, and just building some relationships with them, sharing the vision of what we are doing, and then asking them if they had somebody that they thought would uh, be appropriate for the type of camp that we did. Um, one thing that uh, we discovered very early on, which I, I, I have no doubt just about all of you guys have also discovered, but in that approach, you, you have a couple different type of people that want to be staff workers. Uh, for us, some of the people that came in, they wanted to be a staff worker and they thought they were coming to have a great time and have a good, you know, have a take a vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and so we realized, uh, yeah, 
we realized very early on I had set the expectation for the type of person we wanted as a staff member. And that kind of goes into the why and some of the things that were, was discussed earlier. But uh, several years ago, I began to very intentionally set the expectation that you're not, as a staff worker, you're not coming to have a vacation. You're not really even coming to enjoy yourself per se, although you, you will enjoy yourself, but that's not the reason you're there. Um, and so what I found is that really, that changed the type of person we were recruiting. Yeah. Uh, and it, it changed the mentality of the type of people that were coming. And suddenly we, we found ourselves with people that wanted to actually come and work instead of come and enjoy themselves. And as a result of that changed expectation, then they enjoy themselves a lot. Yeah. But uh, that, that allowed us to really just speak into the lives of a number of the local churches. You know, uh, sometimes they will send kids to our camp. Uh, and then we get to send the kids back, you know, having a good experience. And so then that continues to build relationship between our churches. Um, and it's become a, you know, a, just a good interdenominational relationship building uh, process. But uh, that's that's where a lot of our staff come, that uh, other local churches around the area, um, especially those churches that don't already do U camps, but uh, but very intentionally going out and me being the face of the person talking to somebody at another church to assure them we're not trying to steal their kids, we're not trying to steal their workers, all that type of stuff. I mean, that, from our side, that was very, very important and, uh, for them to know that and then and then to follow it at, up afterwards so that when somebody comes, you know, a year later and says, you know what, I'm thinking about switching churches and I thought I might come to your church. You know, my standard response became, well, you need to go see your pastor. And if your pastor yeah. blesses it and says they, that's acceptable and they're okay with that, then okay. But if you're upset at him or mad at him, he's not preaching good or whatever it is, you've got to work it out with him or just or don't come. Yeah. And that, that has been Yeah. That's showing integrity, too. Um, I, I really like how you foster the relationships by having coffee and having lunch with the other leaders and you know in each of our areas are different you know Jeff I know you probably want to speak to this but I mean what what's going to work in Connecticut is different than Wyoming you know different than Texas or Southern right. California or the upper Midwest so um, we, we hope to just hit principles here and then of course you have to prayerfully take them before God and and ask him to show you the way so uh, it sounds like you're doing a great job. And I know, Toby, you ha always have more campers than you have beds for. So camper recruitment doesn't seem to be a problem for you, which is nice. No. Does anybody else want to say anything? Well, you know, I think, yeah. I, I think that, that's really what uh, one of the things that, that we have to take into consideration that what happens in Atlanta yeah. and what happens in Oklahoma, what happens in Montana, what happens in Tahoe, it's going to look differently, and and as long as we're clarifying our why, yeah, and we're clarifying our why with the mindset of who is it that God is bringing into our path, I think our approach will be slightly different, and that's the beautiful piece, yeah, of of what we're doing. Absolutely. Thank you, Toby, and thank you, Joe. Anybody else want to share before we move on to the next slide? All right, Jeff, you want to take us to the next slide? Yes. Okay. So here are some of the ones that uh, we were talking about that I just kind of put up there as a, as a general before we got back on. Um, maybe some of our places is going to local GCI churches. And, and just, just share with people that, you know, there, there are people who can come and they can just they can spend time praying there. Um, matter of fact, I remember I, I saw this person crosswalk. There were people... Their sole goal was to pray. Plus eight. And so but we can go and there's people who need in the kitchen. There's people who can just look after folks, people who can do logistic things. What we want to do is get people engaged so that we can build a bigger connection, relational connection between the young people and the staff members and the churches, but also help the people in the churches understand what's really going on in the local church. So 
we got that. We got um, former GCI campers that you can that you can go to, or former folks who've been at camp. Um, Christian college campuses, local ministry associations, and youth ad words. Uh, maybe she'll talk about that a little bit. You, you got flyers or your website, the videos that you guys produce, your post camp videos, putting those things up on YouTube and, and using those for recruitment, doing church visits, going in the region or in the region where you are, the local churches around you, and actually spending time um, telling people, just spending time being in the local church and then sharing what, what the taking five minutes or ten minutes to give that, that, that two minute, three minute. Uh, elevator pitch and, and share what God is doing there, telling telling stories of what he's doing there. What a powerful piece. So, and you want to go ahead and, and just share some of the things that, that you've seen there? Yep. Okay, so what I did is I kind of put together a chart, and I know this pro- it's not complete. I, I haven't thought of a few things since I made it, but some of our marketing groups for, for campers might be previous campers, which Jeff mentioned, and and some of the best ways, which probably you all have done this, is either to in person, just look them in the eye and say, I need you at camp, like Jeff was talking about, or call them, email them, Facebook them. That's been a real successful thing with myself. And I know uh, Natalie wrote me and said that that's been one of her best practices is to use Facebook. And not just, not just posting a post on a status, but actually going to them privately and saying, hey, you know, what are you, what are you up to this summer? Do you, or is camp on your radar? I'd love to see you. And and that's been one of my best recruiting techniques. Instagram, of course, is a big one. We, we um, try and do things on Instagram to build up excitement. But the biggest thing is that you have to have personal conversations and, and look them in the eye, so to speak, even if it's online, and invite them. Another marketing group is for younger siblings of previous campers. I've noticed recently that a lot of the kids that are four, five, and six are just counting the days before they can become a camper. And um, so I've, that's like an area that I've tried to focus more on is talking to the parents and saying, you know, hey, when, when, does, when does Jesus's little brother turn eight? And usually they're bugging the parents and, and dreaming of going to camp. So you don't have to push it that much, but that is another recruitment segment. Another one is friends of campers both previous campers that have been before or currently registered campers, which I don't know how many of you have your registration open, but um, if you've got somebody that's currently registered, talk to them. Don't just say, oh, good, I got them, but go back to them and say, do you have any friends at school that, you know, need this encouraging camp? Or and maybe you can offer some incentive. I just put offer incentives there because you can run like little specials for the next month. Anybody that brings a friend gets a free t-shirt or gets a free $25 in the gift store or, or, or something. You can find something that you might be able to share with them. Next one, staff children. That's another one. Sometimes you can recruit a whole family. And, and sometimes I, I work on families to try and get the whole family to come get the campers and the parents to come. And another one is, the children and grandchildren of GCI members, which probably many of you are familiar with, there might be a church that doesn't have kids, but they've got some money and they've got grandparents who like to send their kids. And that works. Some of the marketing techniques for that are church announcements, working with the pastors, talking to them, contacting ones, you know, through email, Facebook, phone calls. And like Jeff said, if if you have a chance to go speak at another church, uh, Go share about camp, even if you get just a two-minute window in the announcement section. Talk about camp. Get it at the forefront of their minds. One trend I see, at least in Southern California, is they'll talk about camp for about a month, and then school starts, and their minds are not on camp at all. Everything just comes to a halt. They're thinking about band uniforms and and Christmas, and, and so to keep camp at the front of their minds is a real challenge. Um, we, we struggle with it every year. I've tried all Christmas. I thought, hey, you know, maybe maybe I could offer some kind of incentive and or encourage the campers to ask for camp tuition for a Christmas present from their family and friends. But it's it's never really been that successful. Okay, next slide. My uh, children of employees of the camp facility. This just came up to me last year, and and I'm going to really try and take advantage of it this year. We at our camp. There are some families that live on the camp, and they run the camp. They take care of it, and they have children. And so I don't know how many of them get invited to camps 
that come and rent from their facility, but this is one area that you might want to look into and work with your guest services person to make that connection. Another area of marketing is brand new campers whose parents are just looking for a camp. And I tried this this year. I put money. We put about $1,000 into advertising this year, which is sounds like a lot. And it was because we've never really done that before. But uh, for us, with our tuition being so high, even if we got two or three campers, that us and we ended up getting, I think we got six or seven campers this year. And most of them, if you see what I listed there is advertising print. I did newspaper, magazine. I passed out flyers to schools. I drove around and found Christian schools and gave them stacks of flyers. Um, I listed on many online camp directories. Some are free, some are have a fee. And printed camp directories, I did one of those. And out of all of that, Google AdWords was by far the best bang for the buck. In fact, next year, I'm not going to spend money on anything else but that. So basically what happens, and it's usually late in the game, parents are online. They're like, I want to send my kids to camp. They've got money set aside, which is a good thing. They're not really looking for scholarships. They just want to send their son, to, their son or daughter to a good camp. So they go online and they, they Google San Diego Christian camp. And so if that's what I'm advertising, if that, those are my flag words for Google AdWords, our camp comes up. And like I said, I had people calling me out of the blue and I'd say, and they'd say, I oh, just internet search, internet search. And I thought to myself, if I were looking for a camp for my kids, that's what I would do. That's how I would look for a church. I, I would get online and, and check them out first online. So I can talk more about Google AdWords later. There's, it's a pretty, they actually, their Google is very, they're really wonderful about walking you through it. I had a lady, she's probably in India, but anyway, she stayed on the line with me for about an hour and got all of my Google AdWords set up so that I would spend my money the most efficiently. And you basically pay per click or per hit. And if you don't want to, you don't want people clicking on you if they're the wrong kind of people. So you don't just advertise tennis shoes. You advertise Nike running shoes. And then only people looking for Nike running shoes are going to click on that ad. And then you pay, you know, seven cents or two cents, whatever, for every click. But um, your clicks are going to be more efficient if you get the right AdWords. So... Um, and then one more thing, Christian kids and churches near the camp facility. And this is what Toby was, and I've, I've done this a bit in San Diego because our camp is near us, offered to go to their youth group or like Toby said, I think is even better, go to their pastor, have coffee with them, build a relationship. And then you can go to their youth group and do a little presentation and then do a drawing for a scholarship. You, and everybody's all excited. They're putting their names and their emails in. And then you, you've got all their names and emails. Now you can use to contact them for future uh, to let them know about maybe other offers you're going to do with camp. And then you draw one out and give them a 50% off or buy one, get one free or something like that. And for some reason, that seems to work really well. Uh, for us at SoCal, uh, we have a 270-person minimum, and so it, it forces me to do to look outside of GCI. It forces me to get creative and push and sometimes I fall into the landmine and just filling just grabbing warm bodies with staff and um, this is so we'll move into staff one one way obviously is previous staff you guys know that you just follow up from last year I hear you were an awesome counselor are you thinking about doing it again and you get get their commitments early and get the ownership you know help them start developing the theme or something where they, you know, designing the t-shirts. And I know you guys at Crosswalk are awesome about this because it's a year round thing for you besides your, your one month vacation after camp's over. And then you're right back into it and you guys own it. So that's a beautiful way to do it. Um, for a year round camp, it's harder. You got to start drumming up, uh, you know, a couple, six months before camp, you got to really start drumming, beating the drums, marketing drums, previous campers. Of course, that's our, that our favorite one because you're watching kids go through this, this, you know, raise up as leaders and then come on staff. And sometimes they don't feel worthy, so you kind of need to make that one-on-one -on -one contact, do that one-on-one -on -one personal invitation. Friends of staff, and this is a good one. Like I, like sometimes your staff members don't know that you're desperate for staff, and so if you if you talk to them and say, do you have any friends that are teachers? Teachers are excellent. 
because they get the summers off. Sometimes it's really hard for people to get vacation to go to camp. But, but college students and teachers are, are excellent people for staff. Um, GCI interns, we've got more interns now, so I'm guessing we're going to have more interns at camps. And Now, they have to have their own boundaries so they don't get burned out, but let's use them at our camps for sure. And you can discuss that with Jeff McSwain. And then Christian Colleges is another place. Sometimes they have to get practical ministry hours in, and they're looking for places to serve. So if you have an inroad, maybe a, you know a student that's already there, they can ask around, or you can go straight into the office and get yourself listed on some bulletin board or some online board where people can go to get internships and that kind of thing. And the last thing I have listed here is just local youth pastors and Christian school teachers in your local area. And there's just another resource. Um, one of the marketing things I didn't list was YouTube. And I, Joe, I loved your video. It was awesome. I, I hear you're willing to do a video for Gen Men in the near future. But uh, YouTube is a great place to do marketing. And if they see something that looks awesome on YouTube, they might follow the link to the website and, and sign up that way. Another. So I will ask, does anybody have anything that I did not list on here that you want to add to the marketing techniques that have worked well for you? Maybe a group, a marketing group that we haven't talked about that we overlooked that you want to add? Just unmute yourself and start talking. If I can add one thing, this is Jeff again. Hi, Jeff. Um, one of the things that, that came up is, you know, and then this year, not just Christian schools, but Christian clubs and high schools, because yes. most of those kids are looking for hours for volunteers. And if they can go and get trained and equipped and do some volunteer hours at camp, um, that, that would be a great thing. We're also we're always in the, in the, the business of trying to equip young people to, to have more leaders at camp. And so many of our camps, as, as all of you are, we're, we'll talk about this later on in other sessions, are putting together like little crews or, or uh, counselors in training or, or leadership in training. And that's a great tool for those young people to get uh, recommendations as well as um, practical ministry experience. Yeah. And, and they, I think they love to have it. And, and I think they get to, they'll get to see ministry in a very healthy environment. With people who are committed, I, I found that one of the things that, that I love as a camp director that even differed from the church. In the church, in the, I, think, I thought of one of the passionate the pieces of, of camp ministry is that one thing you know is that everybody that's at camp wants to be there. Yeah. Where sometimes in the local congregation, you have people who feel like they have to be there. And when you've got 100% of your staff members, who want to be there, who are choosing to be there. There's so much more that the Holy Spirit can do with willing hearts. Um, and you know those people are stepping in, and, and therefore what you have is, is an even greater opportunity to bless folks. And I think you, that's a selling point as well. It's a, it's a recruiting tool um, to help people understand that, man, you, you, the Holy Spirit does so much more because part of what you have is everyone engaged. Yeah, that's great. We're back on your your um, PowerPoint. Does anybody else want to add anything? Anything you found that worked really well? Or did we kind of cover most of it? Joe, are you unmuted? Yes, I am. Um, you want to say one, something? one of the things, uh, yeah. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, you were talking about the website um, and, and how, uh, you know, we're seeing it more and more often that, that people are going to websites to uh, research and to check out a place before they even make any kind of initial contact at all. And uh, which is, which is a great thing because they already know a lot about uh, the camp or, or the church before they make contact. So it's a, it could be good conversation uh, straight out of the gate. Now, with that being said, <clears throat> there's also a lot of research out there that shows how, people get turned off on yeah. going to certain businesses or making contacts because of a poorly designed or um, unprofessional website. And so I yep. think it's, it's really important that uh, websites can be a beautiful thing, but at the same time uh, we got to 
when, when we do a website and we design a website, it's important that we make it to where it, it's easy to navigate. There's a lot of pictures on it. Uh, one of the important yep. things that we want to really try to strive for the new Crosswalk website was to make, because a parent is going to go there for their camper to check out camp. Yep. And so we want the parent to feel safe as they, um, as they're going through the website. And, but then there's a balance. A lot of times we sit there and think, well, we got to create this really cool and youthful website because we want to attract the campers. Actually, it's going to be mostly probably adults or staff or yep. parents that are checking out the website, not a teenager. Yep. They might That's check right. it out, but we got to, we got to have this balance uh, of the website being geared between a camper uh, adults, parents, and, and that kind of thing. So it's, I, I would yeah. recommend that, <clears throat> that, uh, you know, if you do a website or you already have a website, um, may, put some dollars into it. You don't have to put in thousands upon thousands, but try to yeah. find somebody that is involved in camp that kind of knows how to do it or a young person that's passionate yeah. about it and loves camp. And, and they can usually sit there and just plug things in. They've made websites so simple now that it's, yeah. it's easy. It's getting easier and easier to do. And so uh, I, I think it's really important to, to have a, a good website, uh, especially if you're going to try to promote it. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to add, uh, you know, I loved what you're talking about, Anne, as far as the relational side of inviting people and thinking deeper into Okay, how is that person connected to somebody else and to somebody else to somebody else? One of the things that it kind of dawned on me since moving down to Dallas and getting involved in another church down here opposed to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City Crosswalk Camp was the main ministry of Oklahoma City. So almost everything we did revolved around camp. Well, coming down here to Dallas... I started to realize after being here for two years that I'll mention camp and then like a month later, uh, I'll mention it again and somebody will be like, oh yeah, that is coming up, you know, or I'll mm -hmm. sit there and, and mention it once and then two months down the road, it's like, hey, registration deadline's right around the corner and they're like, oh, I forgot about it, you know, and I'm thinking, how do you forget about it? And then it, it, mm -hmm. it had to, it dawned on me that not everybody is as passionate as I am about camp in this congregation. And so when, when I have people that uh, have gone to camp and they're excited, I almost have to remind them on a weekly basis of, Hey, don't forget about the camp. Don't forget about camp. Don't forget about camp. Get registered for camp. We need you at camp. We want you at camp. Same thing with campers, especially communicating with yep. the parents within uh, the congregations is, Going to the parents, hey, don't forget about the registration. Don't forget. I feel I feel like I had to sit there and and tell people every single week about camp because <laughs> almost every yeah. single week they'd be like, oh yeah, and I'm like, how do you forget? Camp is awesome, <laughs> but not. They have other lives outside of camp. Right. It is my life, right. so it's like I eat, breathe, and sleep <laughs> this stuff. So I just wanted yep. to add that uh, to it. Excellent. I love, Joe, I love your point about the website and um, surprised I didn't have that on there. In fact, I think if we can squeeze it in, an extra webinar on website development would be fabulous because, like you said, all the statistics show if they go to your website and it's outdated and it's kind of hokey and cheesy, they're done. Like, they're not even going to come back and look at your, because they think it's a reflection of your camp. So it's really important to have you know, like you said, something that is quality and it's useful and fun, but it's not, it's really for the parents. It's to say to the parents, we're about youth, but you can trust us. And it's not so much trying to have too much flash and, and pizzazz because the kids are not really hanging out on websites mostly. They're not even really on Facebook that much anymore. So um, Facebook and websites are really, the, a lot of it is the parents that are going to be on there checking it out. So, Jeff, did you want to say anything else? Do you want to lead us through these action steps and a final prayer? Yeah, that's, that's where we're going to go. Let me type a note into the, uh, 
just in here, I've got a young man in my congregation named Taylor Kamak, and one of the things that Taylor really is gifted to do, he, he's gifted in, in website development, um, as well as Joe and some of the others, and I would say that if you guys have people like that, that we can make available to other folks and just have them put in, get in contact with them, please let us know. Uh, but if, if you want to uh, contact Taylor, you can send me a note, and I'll, I'll forward Taylor on to you. Uh, he wants to help GCI congregations, GCI camps in ways that, you know, I'm not gifted in, but he is. Um, and I know he's willing to do that. So if you're interested, just drop me an email, and I'll, and I'll connect you to Taylor. Um, I, I do want to be judicious with your time. And so what I'd love for you to do is um, take a minute and, and, and commit to doing something, if you don't mind. Commit to sending a note in our own, in our gym uh, page. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll put up a question up there. We'll put something out there. Maybe I don't know if we can do it even here later. But I take an action step. Make yourself a commitment. I will recruit staff by. And how how will you do it? What, what's one way that you that you're willing to do it? Um, yeah, I'm going to try something new. I'm willing to commit to recruit some staff by doing this, or I'm willing, I'm going to take the step of recruiting some campers by doing this. And, and set yourself one goal, give yourself a deadline, and, and then let us know how it plays out. Let us pray about it with you. Um, and I think we need to help each other. Yeah. If, if there's, and, I, and I think each one of us is willing to share what we've learned. And please, everyone understand, what you've done works, and, and it can be a blessing to somebody else. You just You never know. Whether it's one little thing that you did will make a big difference. It's passing on the information that really is the gift. And uh, don't assume that what you're doing is too small. Because yeah. it may very well be the, the one thing that somebody needs. And, that, and that's our goal, whether it's with campers, things you're doing in the community, things you're doing with, with other churches. You may find something that really, really works. And, um, and it may work in somebody else's venue. And so I would just really encourage you to, to commit to an action step and, and say, I willing to do it. Uh, I no longer direct the camp, but I tell you what, I, I am willing to do as a camp coach. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to communicate with every pastor in the district around my camp, and I'd be willing to communicate with every pastor in the district or in the, in the district or region that your camp is in. And just ask them if you can come by or if we can speak into or you have someone in your, in your camp team come speak into the life of that church for mm -hmm. those people what it is that your why is and what, what the mission is and what, what you feel God's doing in your camp. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to do that and I'm sure Mark and Ann will be willing to help absolutely. out in whatever way we can. Yeah, um, our, our goal is to bless those congregations but help them see what God is doing. The Spirit is moving in these camps. He's moving in the staff. He's moving in intergenerational ministry and sometimes people just need to see how it plays out. Right. I'll give you an example. At, at Pathways here in Ohio, we had a, a situation where we had uh, some folks who were coming in to do food, but they couldn't come. And we lost their cook. And so there was a plea that went out from, from Aaron, from the director, and it went down to my local congregation in Chillicothe. Got about 35 people down in Chillicothe. And I put a, I put a call out, and I, and I told them, and about five people from the congregation said they would do it. They came and helped out the first year, and then they ran the kitchen the next year. But it was only because the need was asked. Mm -hmm. Aaron asked, and a congregation of 35 people, who what they would do every year was they would provide the first night's meal, they would order pizza. But this year they decided to come and pray and take it on. And I tell you what, it was a gift. And sometimes it's just really so simple as asking. Mm -hmm. So I would share that with you, because if you look up the field of life for harvest, and I really do think that's what Jesus is, is doing, what he was showing with this married woman, is that sometimes our need to just ask and tell the story, there yeah. might be a congregation who was praying for an opportunity to serve the youth of our church or serve the, a ministry of our denomination, but they don't know how. And your ask may be that very request. And they'll look up and say, man, how do we know, how did God know what we were praying for? Yeah. I think when we look at scripture, we see that more often than not. That Jesus answers somebody else's prayer of yesterday 
by letting you hear it today. Fabulous. So this was our agenda. I hope we accomplished it. I think we did. Um, looking at uh, starting with our why and looking at some recruiting basics and some potential landmines and sharing some best practices, taking the challenge and a commitment. And so what I'd love for you to do now, if you don't mind, is, is just join me again in an open-handed prayer. For those of you who were in at the very beginning, Michelle Fleming led us in, a, in an exercise at the uh, at our, our gym meeting just last week in San Diego. And she was just asking us to open our palms, open our hands with a heart that, that, as a manifestation of our willingness and our desire to receive from Jesus, to receive from him in a way that we're, we're asking, but we're asking expectantly. And we're asking with a heart that is asked him to lead and to shower us. So if, um, if, Anne, would you mind just closing with us in prayer tonight? Absolutely. Oh, Father, Son, and Spirit, we're overjoyed to be able to participate with what you're doing with young people in this world. It's a crazy, mixed-up world with a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of abandonment, but you've given us this vehicle called camp where adults who are filled with your spirit can go love on kids, and kids can find hope in the midst of dark situations, and they can hear the call to leadership and to ministry. So, Father, I pray that you will empower every single one of our camps, um, all 20 camps, that you will be in the private lives of the directors because they usually wear a lot of different hats and they've got full-time jobs in addition to, to doing camp ministry. And and as Joe said, it, it's our life. And so uh, we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it. And so, God, I pray that you will give them rest when they need it, that you will help them be efficient in their planning and organizing, that you'll bring them a team that's solid and capable and help them to let go of things, help me to let go of things and, and empower other people. That's the way that they're going to grow and develop and help us keep our eyes open for the next director and the next camp that we can plant nearby. So Lord, I pray that you'll give us your vision. I thank you for the time we had today and that you helped us overcome even the technical obstacles that we faced and I pray, Father, that you will um, bless Jeff and his family right now as his, his mother is, um, is struggling with her, her, even just her breath. Her kidneys have failed, and, and it's, just gonna, it's a rough time for the Broadneck family. So I just pray that you will comfort them with your great comforter and uh, everlasting peace. So we, we commit our camps to you. We commit our, our lives to you, our hearts to you, and we thank you again for the joy that that this isn't all up to us, that we're just participating with your part of ministry called camp. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Before, let, me, let me just share one thing as I, as I close. Um, I, I think we just, we just need to trust that the Lord will send the people yeah. who need what he's given us to offer. And he will send us folks to love on, folks to equip, and folks to send. Yeah. And, and so our, our, our mission is to trust him and ask him to bless us and blow our mind. Yeah. Please ask him to blow your mind in recruiting. And, and we, Ann and I and Mark and Anthony, we would love your feedback. And I, I do apologize for this, uh, for the technical difficulty stuff. So good. Um, and I, I pray that and we'll be able to get it, get it going in, in future ones. But we love your feedback. If this wasn't helpful, we want that honest feedback. If you found it helpful, if it sparks some thoughts, please don't let them just stay with you. Let's share them with each other. If, if, if the Holy Spirit sparks a thought in your mind based on something you heard, plug it in somewhere. Let's, let's plug it in our and use our, our communication tool on Facebook and yeah. our communication tool through some of these names here, too. It, it's really our desire to, to equip each other. Absolutely. All right? Speaking of which, our next webinar is... Uh, four weeks away. It's November 19th, the Thursday before Thanksgiving, and it's going to be on finances. And so we'll have some guest speakers that will be sharing, if, especially if this is overwhelming for you, the whole idea of doing the audits and the, the quarterly reports. This would be the time to get on there. We're hoping to have Matt and Pam Morgan both um, helping us with that. And then December 7th, uh, I'm sorry, 17th is our curriculum. That's Jeff McSwain. 
is going to be sharing. We got to see a demonstration of it at the Genmen meetings this past weekend, and it was so powerful to the young people that were present. Um, it, it has power to really impact some lives. And we're working on the title, but right now it's celebrating the grip. But uh, we're working on some other ways to re maybe phrase it. But the idea that he's got a grip on us and um, is not going to let us go, it's really powerful. So um, put those two on your calendar. They're in the email I sent you, as well as the first January, I think January, February, and March, as well as the Converge dates. So bless you all. Um, thank you all. If there's, I'm going to stop recording right now, and then I'm going to unmute everybody. And if you want to say anything to us.